Good morning and welcome to Crenshaw Online. We are so excited that you are joining us for worship on this Pentecost Sunday. We pray that God's blessings are flowing in your life and we encourage you to stay tuned for a worship broadcast that is created just for you. While you are joining us here on today, we would encourage you to join us in the chats and let us know where you're worshiping this morning and how God is working in your life. We would also encourage you to let us know if there are any next steps that we, the church, can help you walk into. And beloved, we would encourage you to contact your friends and family right now and invite them to join you in worship as well. We also would love for each of you to uh, contact us through our Facebook page as well as on Instagram, TikTok, and we would love to make sure that the Word of God continues to go forth through Crenshaw United Methodist Church. And for all of you who are joining us today as well, we would encourage you to go to our Facebook page and there you will find a survey as we are planning to re-enter the sanctuary soon and very soon. Uh, we want to find out where you are and what your goals and desires are as we make this journey back into the house of God. It is a 12 uh, 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 survey, a survey of 12 questions that we just would love for you to take the time and answer so that we will make the right decision as we move forward into the house of the Lord. So beloved, I invite you to stay tuned. I invite you to continue to pray and pray as we move forward. Stay tuned as we move into a time of praise and worship. Let's just praise God this morning for he's worthy. Oh, magnify the Lord. Magnify the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. For he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord. Magnify the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Oh, Hosanna. Oh, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation, Hosanna. Oh, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Listen, I will praise His holy name. I will praise His holy name. For He is worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. I will praise his holy name. I will praise his holy for name. He is worthy to be for praised. he is worthy oh, to be Hosanna. Oh, blessed be the rock. Yeah, yeah. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Oh, blessed be the rock. Yeah, blessed be the rock of my salvation. I will lift up holy hands. I will lift up holy for hands. He is worthy to be for praised. He is worthy to be praised. I will lift up holy hands. For hands. He is worthy to for be praised. Worthy oh, to be Hosanna. Oh, blessed be the rock. Yeah, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Oh, blessed be the rock. Yeah, blessed be the rock of my salvation. I will praise his holy name. I Praise his holy for name. He is worthy to be for praised. He is worthy to be praised. I will praise his holy name. I will praise his holy for name. He is worthy to for be praised. He is worthy oh, to be Hosanna. Praised. Oh, blessed be the rock. 
yeah. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Oh, blessed be the rock. Oh, yeah. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Oh, magnify the Lord. Oh, magnify the For Lord. He is worthy to For be he praised. is worthy to be praised. Oh, Magnify the Lord. Magnify the Lord. For He is worthy to be praised. For He is worthy to be praised. Oh, Hosanna. Oh, blessed be the rock. Oh, yeah, yeah. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Oh, blessed be the rock. Well, now, blessed be of my salvation. Hosanna, Hosanna. Oh, blessed be the rock. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Well, blessed be the rock. Oh, blessed be the rock of my salvation. As we continue to worship on this Pentecost Sunday, we invite you to join with us in the centering words as we are called into worship on today. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come as tongues of fire to enliven us. Come as sighs too deep for words to comfort us. Come as our advocate to guide us. Come, Holy Spirit come we testify to the goodness of God we testify to the love of Jesus Christ we testify to the presence of the Holy Spirit let us sing praises to our God let us sing praises unto Jesus Christ let us sing praise to the Holy Spirit let us pray O wind of God present us on this morning as vessels that are ready to be used for your glory. Holy Spirit that has been present with us since creation, fall on us now. And so God, as we tarry here this morning, we ask that you would speak to us on today, that you would Fill us with your Holy Spirit as we are filled by your word. That as we go forth this day that we will remember what power we have through your word. And so God we ask that the Spirit would come forth and move us into places where we need to share your gospel. That your spirit would present us able to share your gospel so that others would come to know you as Lord and Savior. And so God, we pray that the spirit would come this morning and that it would bring boldness to each of us to stand before you to stand before your people and to be unashamed knowing that you, God, are with us. So whisper to us, O Holy Spirit. Shout to us, O Holy Spirit, so that we will move on this day. O God, we pray for those who are sick. We pray for healing of mind, body, soul, and spirit. We pray for those who have lost loved ones that the Holy Spirit would come and bring forth comfort. We pray, God, that for decisions that need to be made today, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit would bring about the wisdom to make the right decision on all levels. We pray, God, that in this worship experience today that you would teach us something new, that it would cause us to move out of our comfort zones and move to the designated places where people need to know of your love. So God, we ask that you would hear our prayer today 
and that God we would listen to your answers and that we would move accordingly in the name of Jesus Christ we pray amen the scripture lesson for this morning is taken from the book of Acts chapter 2 uh, verses 1 through 21 I would encourage you to read all on this morning beginning at verse 1 and when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it sat upon each of them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude, they came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue where we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites as the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia in Pontus and Asia. Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what does this mean? Others mocking said these men are full of new wine but peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them o men of judea and all ye that dwell in jerusalem be known unto you and hearken to my words for these are not drunken individuals as you suppose seeing that it is only the third hour of the day but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass that in the last days, says God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth below blood and fire vapor of smoke the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved the word of God for the people of God thanks be to God let the glory of the Lord rise among us let the glory of the Lord Rise among us, let the praises of our King rise among us, let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us, let the glory of the Lord rise among us, let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, 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 oh. oh, let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord. Rise among, Rise among us. 
sons of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let the song, let the song of the Lord rise among us. Let the song of the Lord rise among us. Let the song of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, 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 oh. let it rise. Let it rise some more. Oh. Grace and peace to you on this Sunday morning as we celebrate uh, Pentecost. We pray God's blessing upon you as we break the bread of life on today. Uh, the scripture has already been read and we invite you to join us right there in the book of Acts chapter 2.
Beloved, we live in a high-tech world where it was just uh, 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 over half a century ago where uh, cell phones and uh, iPods and laptops and DVDs were considered to be uh, some high-tech Orson Welles sci-fi kind of stuff. None of us could have ever dreamed uh, that today we would find ourselves so dependent upon technology that now it drives our economy as well as our personal lives. Consider our, out, uh, our own United States Postal Office that it is forced to continue to drive the cost of postage upward. Why? Because many people now don't even mail letters. They simply text a message or email a message rather than writing a letter. You see, today's inventions are being developed at such an astonishing rate that we can't even keep up. It is just a couple of weeks ago, beloved, that I learned that on my uh, uh, debit card, I can simply just tap it and it will automatically send the payment to wherever it needs to go. Uh, and beloved, I am amazed that that had been going on for a while, but I didn't even know about it until just last week. And so I must be honest with you, everywhere I go, I'm just looking for an opportunity to just tap my card. Beloved, the eight track tapes are now in the grave. Uh, VCRs are in the grave. Even DVDs are in the grave at this point in time because people don't listen to music on cassettes or DVDs anymore, CDs or anything like that, because now we can stream everything. Beloved, this high-tech language has taken over our world, and most of us would simply need a high-tech dictionary just to communicate uh, with the sales staff at stores like Best Buy. Did you know that there is even computer software that will allow you to simply talk to it and it will type your entire term paper? It is unbelievable. Things that I wish we had when I was in high school and in college that all I would have to do is sit in front of a device and just talk to it and it would type a term paper for me that I could turn in. Oh, how I would have procrastinated and just got it done at the last minute if that was the case. Beloved, this idea of a universal global language is not new as man thinks. It may have taken us until the 21st century to discover it, but it is not new. You see, heaven developed this high-tech tongue over 2,000 years ago before text messages and translation devices ever entered the mind of our human scientists. As we follow, beloved, the text, it was only 10 days that had elapsed since Christ's ascension to his throne. The apostles in complete obedience to Christ's final command have been waiting in the upper room from power on high. Their only recorded duty was to elect Matthias to fill the vacancy of Judas. And we even wonder if that was the right choice because Christ chose Paul as his apostle to fill the void. Except for that one doubtful activity, they spent their time in prayer and supplication, patiently and harmoniously awaiting the promise of heavenly power. Oh, beloved, can you just imagine the intense application and anticipation in that room? Because they knew that they were waiting was only going to be a short time. And they had at least a partial idea of what they were waiting for. They were waiting for heaven's power to be turned on. The Feast of Pentecost was only days away. And they probably drew the likely conclusion that the promise would be fulfilled sometime during that celebration. So, very early, the apostles gathered once again in that upper room to be quiet, willing vessels, each one of them with the same thought, will it be today? 
The same, beloved, holds true for you and I, that if you want to be filled with the power of God's Holy Spirit, you must first present yourself as a willing vessel emptied before God and ready for God's retooling. It was the third hour when Peter got up to speak, and since they probably came together at dawn, it's safe to assume that many had been praying and had already been lifted in the morning air, each expressing their united desire to receive the gift that Jesus Christ had promised, when suddenly it was a deep strange sound that was heard in the distance. It rapidly grew closer and closer, and every mind in that room was thinking the same thought. Is this the promise? Beloved, as it came closer and closer until at last it burst into the chamber where they were sitting quietly and immobile. Notice that Luke does not say it was a wind or some form of agitated air. It was a sound as of wind. The language implies that there was no rush of atmospheric change, but just the sound of a mighty tempest. It sounded like wind, but it was not the wind. It was God's audible symbol of his breath that was being bestowed upon each of them. Then the visible symbol of God's presence arrived after the audible symbol of God's presence arrived. Luke says it lit on the tongues of every disciple as a fire. It was like fire, but it was not fire. The Bible says that this fire-like visible symbol sat on each of them like cloven tongues. No doubt at the moment, some began to remember the words of John the Baptist. Remember when he said, one is coming who will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. God's Spirit was to burn within them, thawing their natural coldness and melting their hearts with a welcoming warmth that would lead to flaming enthusiasm, fervent love, burning zeal, and transformational power. Imagine the rejoicing power. Imagine the sudden energy. Imagine the consuming force. Imagine the assimilating action of fire that moved upon these individuals. Well, beloved, it is the same force that is available to you today. It is available to those whose hearts are waiting. It is available to those hearts who are willing to receive it. The upper room had now been turned into what we would call God's filling station. Divine life came to dwell in them. Divine life actually came to actuate and trigger them. It was what we would call a heavenly jump start that would give them victory, that would illuminate them, that, that, that would sustain them, that would direct them, that would ultimately elevate them the gift was complete though they could not receive it all scripture says that each man received by the measure of their faith that which they had room enough to receive they were now in a position to grow steadily until they were filled with all the fullness of God. Notice too that they were all filled, not just the apostles, but the whole 120 of them. Peter quotes from the book of Joel, which prophesied that servants and handmaidens would be recipients of power. Christianity is a democracy. There are diversities of operations and there are degrees of possession but guess what all Christians have the capacity to be filled with the Holy Spirit 
The Bible says that all they that believe on him and only they have received it. The light shone only on the mountain peaks. But now it has flooded the valleys and believers needed only to wade into it with an open heart to receive it. The essential meaning of Pentecost, beloved, is not found in the sound, nor is it found in the fire. It was the communication of the Holy Spirit. The upper room, this filling station, had now given them power. There was an immediate demonstration of this power in the form of what we call a heavenly high-tech tongue or language. Each one, scripture says, began to speak in a language not of their own. This was not heaven language or tongues as we call it. All of them were suddenly speaking in a language that none of them had ever learned. It was as though God had deposited heaven software into their hearts and into their minds so that visitors from every nation were able to understand the simple message of salvation. Where did these visitors come from? The sound of rushing wind had been heard through the city in the early morning hours and had served as a guide to the very spot to where the assembly took place. A curious crowd obviously came hurrying to discover the origin of this tempest noise in the midst of a calm morning. Beloved, I want you to try and imagine the scene here. The apostles stood crowned with a strange glow like cloven tongues of fire on their heads were pouring out rapturous praise in many different languages. And once the astonished ears began to weave through the confusion, every man in the crowd heard at least one or more individuals speaking in their native tongue. They heard someone speaking in their own dialect, in their own language, and all of them were declaring the mighty works of God through the story of the crucified and risen Savior. Oh, beloved, there was no computer. There was no software. There was no humanly conceived device of any kind that was used to accomplish this great witness. It was simply just the power of the Holy Ghost. And the most important result of this indwelling of the Holy Spirit was that it was that it compelled them to witness. You see, this is what I must convey to you on this Pentecost Sunday that it's not enough just to say you speak in tongues. No, no, no. The, the whole focus of speaking in the tongue was to simply be able to convey the message of Jesus Christ. Beloved, they did not retreat to plan their strategies for taking the city of God. They did not assess what they had received to determine the best way to use their gift. They did not pause to analyze the impact that their gift would have on the world. No, their witness poured out out of them like a spontaneous eruption no forethought no discretion no caution no prudence no planning just a prophecy of the universal proclamation of the gospel which would continue to rise upward to the ears of our risen savior oh god help me this morning they just simply prophesied y'all they prophesied of a time when men of every tribe, of every tongue, and people, and nation would lift up their voices to God who has purchased us unto his own blood. And this high-tech communication, unleashed over 2,000 years ago, will never cease while the world still stands. Uh, we have no sound of rushing wind nor visible fire upon our heads, but guess what? The gift still remains because the Spirit of God 
abides forever. You see, beloved, when the prophet Joel looked into the future, God didn't tell him how many years would separate the different parts of the last days that he was describing. He saw the last days as all one piece. Some of what he saw was near to the beginning of the last days and some was near to the end of the last days. So when you read his prophecy, it has two parts, a bright part and a dark part. The bright part you will find in verses 17 and 18 of Acts chapter 2. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and all your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Yeah, and on my manservants and maidservants in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. In other words, Joel saying that one feature of the last days will be the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on people of every kind, men, women, young, old, high and low. God's people will be clothed with power. They will receive power. And the main effect of this power seems to be bold, prophetic speech. Believers of all kinds are going to be so gripped by the power of the Holy Spirit that they see the greatness of Jesus and the purpose of Jesus with extraordinary clarity and do what? They speak it with extraordinary boldness. Ain't nobody hiding. Ain't nobody being quiet. In that time, you are going to speak with boldness. That's the bright part. Of Joel's prophecy. The dark part is in verses 19 and 20. And I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, vapor of smoke, and the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and manifest day. In other words, there will be natural catastrophes. There will be war. There will be bloodshed. There will be conflagration and devastation. There, beloved, is a promise that in the last days, the spirit will be poured out on all flesh, on all the nations will be reached. The true church of Christ will be awakened. It will be revived and sent with extraordinary passion and zeal and prophetic power and right in the midst of terrorism, right in the midst of war, right in the midst of persecution, right in the midst of national disaster. The flaming end time church of Jesus Christ will finish the great commission and we will welcome our king of kings and lord of lords oh my dear friends there is going to be a bright bold prophetic christ exalting christ taking risk taking in time band of disciples is that you they're going to be taking the clear and glorious message verse 21 everywhere no matter what whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved is the Holy Spirit dwelling in you if it is then you are pouring your witness on the world if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, then you are telling everyone that there's nobody like Jesus. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit, then you are sharing that God's grace is sufficient to satisfy the soul. If you have been to God's filling station, then you can't help but communicate in the high tech language of heaven that Jesus Christ is Lord. I pray today that you receive the power of the Holy Spirit right where you are. All you have to do is ask, say, Lord, fill me with your spirit. 
And when you are filled with his spirit, the message that comes forth from you is the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Christ crucified, risen, and coming again.
Well, beloved, I am so glad that each of you were able to join us for worship on this morning. I pray that the Spirit of God has moved in your life right where you are. Beloved, we should never forget that the beginning of the church started at the day of Pentecost and the tongues of fire upon each of them caused them to move into the world and share the goodness of God. I want to encourage you on today to not just stay silent about what God is doing in your life, but no, speak up and share the goodness of God for the world will be transformed formed by the word of God. And beloved, I want to encourage you today that no matter what you're going through, no matter how difficult the days may be, know that the spirit of the living God rests upon you and it shall give you strength to move even when your body says, I don't want to move. The spirit of God will come upon you and cause you to do great things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we leave this place on today, I send you forth with this benediction. May the Spirit of God send forth to create, stir in your hearts and minds and souls a vision of new creation. Go, Spirit-filled people, go. Beloved, I want you to make it a great week. We look forward to seeing you same time, same channels on next week. Beloved, we are ever anticipating when we shall gather back in this place to worship together as one in on one accord as in the scripture we read on today. Beloved, I encourage you to make sure to take the survey uh, uh, for our congregation. That will help give me uh, the parameters and the guidelines of what you desire as we enter into a time of gathering together again. I look forward to seeing you soon and very soon. Stay tuned to all of our social media uh, vehicles for announcements as to when we will gather in this place. And I look forward to seeing you soon and very soon. God bless you.